Welcome to Pretend City's Think Outside the Luncheon Box virtual fundraiser. Welcome everyone to the Pretend City Children's Museum Think Outside the Luncheon Box fundraising event. My name is Kellen and I'm a member of the Youth Leadership Council. The Youth Leadership Council is an advisory board consisting of young people committed to furthering the mission of Pretend City. I'm so happy you've joined us with us today, and I would love for you to go to our live chat and say hello and tell us what you love about Pretend City. We also have somebody else who would like to say hi. We have a fun program prepared for you. Now grab some snacks and a drink and enjoy our program. Thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual program filled with tools and resources for your family on how to parent with positivity, how to enhance our children's ability to succeed in school and in relationships, and how to have age-appropriate conversations about equity and inclusivity. Hi, I'm Anya Popoff, here with my friend, fellow board member, and Start Smart co-chair, Leslie Davis. We want to thank our sponsors who generously support healthy development, early learning, and our children's bright futures. We first want to thank our presenting sponsor, Lion Air Museum, Nicole and Bill Lyon, incredible champions for Pretend City. Thanks so much, Lion family. We'll see Bill later in the program. Next, we'd like to thank our leaders, Altrix, Ernest and Young, Carrie and Darren Moore, and Mona and Ruth Shaw. Thank you all so much. Next, we'd like to thank our innovators, Michelle and Brady Bardo, Jen and Pete Buckheim, Anya Popoff and Josh Marmelstein, Capital Group and London Consulting Group. And many thanks to our ambassadors, Barb and Scott Bitzer, Leslie and Colin Davis, the Montoya family, Kumon Math and Reading Center of Foothill Ranch, Sandy and Lynn Stone, and Adina and Josh Stowell. We also want to congratulate two of these outstanding supporters. Both Carrie Moore and Bill Lyon are celebrating their 15 year anniversary serving on Pretend City's board of directors. Congratulations and thank you for your unwavering dedication. Cheers to another 15. <laughs> Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We are truly grateful. Aaron Boyle, Pretend City's board chair, will take it from here. Hi, thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We're so excited to have you join us for the next half hour or so. I'd like to start off by giving a huge shout out to our luncheon chairs, Leslie Davis and Anya Popoff, as well as our fellow board members, Jen Buckheim, Mark Montoya and Mona Shaw for their incredible outside the box thinking in bringing us all together today. I'm gonna to go ahead and jump right in. We at Pretend City truly believe with our hearts that an investment in early childhood is the best investment that we can make in our society's future. An investment in early childhood is one of the only investments that you'll make that can set the course for a child's entire life. We believe that it gives a child the skills necessary to handle failure, to persevere, to become confident, thriving members of society. For those of you who are a little bit newer to our museum or maybe haven't had the chance to come here in person quite yet, let's give you a quick tour and let you know what we're all about. We are quite literally a child-sized museum built to balance the creative, fun, engaging play that children love every day with rich educational content. It's through picking up and becoming different people within society, interactive roles, creative thinking and playing that our kids build the foundation for a strong future. They'll learn foundational math, reading and science skills while they explore and have fun and engage their whole mind and whole body. This is a place for children and parents alike to see how the investment in early childhood can take flight and build a wonderful, beautiful future. We are so thrilled and so honored that you've joined us today, and we hope that you'll join us as we continue to strive to build better brains and stronger futures 
for the children of our community. We are so happy that all of you big kids believe in the importance of play. Play is important for healthy brain development and it's really fun too. Did you know that 90% of our brains are developed by the time we reach three years old? Hi, I'm Clara from the Youth Leadership Council, and I'm here to share with you some of the awesome creations that were submitted for our Think Outside the Lunch and Box contest. What a fun way to inspire creativity with our kiddos. We love building better brains here at Pretend City, and it was so great to see how your family used their imagination to create with a cardboard box. Stay tuned to the end of the show to hear the winners announced. My name is Vidalia Mena and I'm part of the education team here at Pretend City Children's Museum. Do your kids want to have an all-nighter slumber party here at Pretend City? Do you want the museum to yourself with up to 500 of your best friends? Our super silent Pretend City auction packages are up for bid now. Tell all your friends. We're leaving the bidding open until October 30th. Just submit your highest bid and send an email to Monica Rodriguez. Her email is down below and in the live chat. Hi everyone, my name is Adrian. I'm the Assistant Manager of Education Programs here at Pretend City. Pretend City values lifelong learning, which is why it's so great that you're here with us today. So sit back wherever you are and get ready to learn and be inspired together because I'm going to introduce two awesome moms that are gonna share some outside of the box positive parenting hacks and tips with you today. First up is Lindsay Dickhout, Pretend City member, mom of three, CEO, philanthropist, and host of two podcasts. Following Lindsay is Irvine Moms Network member, Dinah Wolf, a DIY blogger and a regular on Disney Family Sundays. Okay, take it away, Lindsay. I am so excited and honored to be part of this great event. Pretend City Children's Museum has been such a big part of my life and my family's life. We've spent so much time there. We even had our little guy's second birthday party there. So we just have the best memories. I love everything that it stands for. And I just love that every time you enter the museum, there's so much creativity and laughter and there's so much love. As I was talking about how much Pretend City means to our family, I thought that one of the best topics would be to talk about love and showing our kids just how much we love them unconditionally, no matter what. Of course, we all love our kids so much but I think that sometimes life gets busy and we forget to actually kind of self audit and see if our actions match our intentions. I'm sharing some of the best hacks that I've learned and a lot of these things, to be honest, came from little micro fails. I have what I call a door frame moment. So when I walk in through a door frame, so if I'm going into my kid's room or they walk into a door frame, so maybe I'm making breakfast and they walk into the kitchen. I kind of call those door frame moments. I use it loosely, but just so I remember to like, whatever's, whatever's happening, take a quick breath, take a beat, and give them a smile, give them my love, give them a hug, and show them love. Next, I try to give each of my kids 10 hugs a day. Now, it kind of sounds crazy, but if you think about it, you could totally go a couple days without hugging your kids sometimes, like just the way things go. So I make a point and they know 10 hugs a day. And it's funny, if we only hugged once during the day, then I'll make them hug me nine times in a row before bed. And it's just like one of those silly things, but it's just like that physical connection, whether they've had a great day or a not so great day. I just think they want our love and attention. And if we can give them hugs and kind of make it fun, that's a really cool thing. Another hack that I do in my own life is at night, instead of watching movies or just kind of zoning out on TV, we will replay videos. So I'll ping, I'll do the screen share um, through Apple TV on my phone. 
and it is a great moment for us to kind of laugh, not to take things too seriously, tease each other, and watch videos back. I just think that this family time together is so important. It helps them with confidence. It actually helps them, I think, remember things too that happened and it just helps like bring each other up. I think it's just a, a cool way for them to feel loved and everyone to get together. Again, if you do it for five minutes, none of these things have to be big commitments. One last thing that I will touch on is I think one of the biggest things we can do to make our kids really feel loved is to be very intentional about who we are to them and how we are to them and not lose our cool. Have patience. I set an alarm on my phone twice a day with words of who I want to be. And I'll pause and I'll say, and I have one at four o'clock because I know I've picked the kids up from school, we're doing snacks, we're doing activities. And so it's, you know, I want to be patient. I want to be a B. I want, you know, whatever it is that you want to be, have a little, have a little alarm on your phone. So it dings you. And sometimes I'll just, you know, we get those days we're in a funk and we're just, you know, you know, racing around. I'll just stop and I'll be like, listen, it's sometimes it's about the process, not the journey. Not every day is gonna be ideal. Some are gonna be a lot more frustrating, but it helps me be an intentional parent, intentional about showing love to my kids and being who I wanna be and not let the little things get to me. Just having that little reminder on my phone is like, ah, yes, these little things really don't matter and this is who I actually want them to be. One thing also thing that I do is I try not to bombard my kids with questions like when they get in the car or from school or, or after some party and I try to give them time before bed. Like again, not having too late of a bedtime, start your bedtime early and just be open to sitting with them and having a special moment because a lot of times I found that my own kids and so many other parents I've talked to that's when kids actually want to talk, when they've wound down and they're reflecting on the day, if anything's bothering them or if they have questions about anything. This is a lot of the times when they want your attention, but sometimes we run ourselves crazy all day, we're doing bedtime too late, and we don't have anything left. They can't get what's best of us, they just get what's left of us. But the whole idea is showing our kids how much we love them on the daily. I hope that some of these practical kind of hacks um, were interesting to you and you might want to implement into your life because I know in our family it's really helped us have a great loving vibe and culture and even if things go sideways my kids know that I love them no matter what because I'm doing these little things every day. Hey, I'm Dinah with DIY Inspired and I love that Pretend City is doing a virtual luncheon this year. The kids and I have so many fun memories of visiting Pretend City and Irvine when they were little and I just wanted to take the time to share some creative ideas that you can do with the kids while we're stuck at home right now. One of the things that the girls and I like to do uh, we call junk drawer crafts. The reason why we came up with that name was because we would literally go into the junk drawer and pull out anything in there that we haven't used in a while and throw it on a t out on a table, including um, recycled materials that we kept like tubes and bottle caps and plastic containers and stuff like that. And we would just throw it all out with some pipe cleaners or whatever we had and we would create um, something out of junk. So this is the most recent um, Forky <laughs> that my four-year-old made inspired by the Toy Story movie. But as you could see, you could just let the kids' imagination go wild and you can come up with some pretty cool crafts this way. Another thing that we like to do is we come up with themes. So this theme was Barbie furniture theme and we took a bunch of shipping boxes. We just recently moved and we just spent hours tearing up and cutting up shipping boxes and we made Barbie furniture out of them. Um, so you can get creative with, we just printed this out. Um, on the computer, cut it out and glued it to make a little TV. Um, we made a whole set. We made a nursery, a living room, a bedroom. It was so much fun. Another theme that we did was a fairy garden theme and this was great because it got the girls outside and we just collected acorns and sticks and rocks 
and we made a whole set of fairy garden stuff um, with glue and popsicle sticks. Um, it's a great way to get the kids outside and also get creative with things that you already have. I hope you like these ideas. As you can see, it doesn't take a huge budget. Um, it just takes a little bit of creativity and it's a wonderful bonding experience um, to craft with your kids and turn some trash into treasure and um, a great way to spend this time that we have with our kids at home. Hello, Pretend City. This is Jason from Move My Moms. Cooped up during this COVID time? Well, I have some ideas in store for you. I got creative and I made a tie-dye, that, including the one I'm wearing right now. I also went camping and hiking with my family and bonded with them. I hope these ideas helped you and I'm also looking forward to seeing family and going to Pretend City. Hi, I'm Suhani from the Youth Leadership Council. We know many of you have a lot of positive memories from playing at the museum or participating in some of our many programs. And we wanted to share some of the messages from families that have enjoyed playing at the museum and the impact that it's made on them. And to everyone who's out there watching, leave us a note in the chat of your favorite memory at Pretend City or how it's made an impact on your family. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, now let's hear from our Pretend City families. Hi, I'm Lori, and these are my grandkids. We love living near Pretend City and being able to go about once a week. We stay about two hours, and there's lots to do and more for the next week. Um, they're going to tell you what they like to do at Pretend City. Um, I like to push the shopping carts around and go and play like store at it, and I also like making the chickens. I like going and seeing the chickens and playing in the farm. I'm a retired teacher and I really like the way that Pretend City is set up for all different kinds of art and activities and lots of developmental fun for the kids to be learning, sharing and just being able to be kids and exploring on their own. We just hope that everybody will be able to become a pretend city citizen and help financially. Thank you. Donate now. The Pretend City Museum has been very special to our family. Uh, for us, our family came about in maybe not the most common way in the sense that uh, my wife and I uh, had adopted our children. So our first child we adopted internationally from Korea. And when he was a year and a half, he came home and so when he came home, uh, it came time to take care of Noah and both of us working full time at the time had to figure out a way to uh, manage his uh, first few months being home and adjusting to the new climate, to the new environment. So a little crazy for him as well as for us being first time parents. And uh, one of the ways we really just had him get used to just being a, a kid in a new world is taking him to Pretend City. So, we took him to Pretend City. Usually it was just uh, Noah and myself coming out here and he could come here every day. There's so many different things to do. Just Pretend City itself uh, has been a great place for us to uh, just have our kids adjusted. And as I mentioned, now we have a second uh, child, uh, his, his, uh, uh, his sister, and uh, she is also uh, adopted from Korea as well. So now she has a chance to enjoy what he did and uh, thanks to uh, pretend city and to the, the, the vast amount of generous donors um, our family has been able to really uh, just enjoy this place uh, and most importantly the kids have been able to find a home outside of you know, maybe their regular home and to come here and to uh, just be a kid uh, and just really enjoy times uh, when it's maybe a little bit more difficult for them. Page, the Director of Education here at Pretend City Children's Museum. Diversity, equity, inclusivity, and social justice are topics that are very important to us. Our Developing and Discovering Diversity program focuses on providing environments for children to learn new cultures and appreciate diversity. I'd like to thank Capital Group for sponsoring our next speaker, Dr. Val Wise, who will offer tips on how you can have age-appropriate conversations with your family about diversity. Dr. Wise is a faculty member in the Graduate School of Education at Johns Hopkins University 
where she teaches diversity, equity, inclusion, and issues of social justice. Take it away, Dr. Wise. Hi, my name is Dr. Valeda Wise, and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about children and race and how to talk to children about race. You might've heard this statement before, Children don't see difference. Very young children aren't biased, so why even talk to them about race? You're just gonna predispose them to think negatively about it. Well, the reality is that it could, that statement couldn't be further from the truth. Dr. Karen Wynn, who's a professor of, of psychology and cognitive science at Yale University, is over something that they call the baby lab. And at the baby lab, she has been investigating morality in young children. Really big topic, isn't it? But she found something really interesting. What she found was that when given an opportunity to demonstrate their bias, young children actually do. She set up an experiment where she had a child first determine whether they liked green beans or graham crackers. Almost all the children like graham crackers, I know I do. Um, but then she had two puppets. Once the child demonstrated that they liked something specific, she had two puppets that she would show them. One puppet she would demonstrate really liked graham pack crackers. The other puppet she would demonstrate would really like green beans. Well then, when given the opportunity, which puppet would the child like? Well, you're right. The child liked the puppet that liked what they liked. But what's interesting is that when the puppet that liked what they liked did something bad to the puppet that didn't like what they liked, they liked that puppet even more. So what does that tell us? That tell us that, that children a, really like someone that's similar to them, but it also shows them that they're predisposed or biased. Dr. Wynn even says that it seems like we're born with a bias, and that bias is important and influential in, in determining what our social groups could be and impacting how we navigate through the world. And then another uh, individual who I think is really important in this work talked about the stages of children's racial identity development. Her name is Dr. Louise Derman Sparks. And Dr. Sparks talks about the fact that children as young as age two begin to socially um, absorb the stereotypes and attitudes and biases around them. Maybe they're not in their family, but from media and just from the world around them, they begin to uh, absorb these biases. And by age four, children are looking at labels about ethnic and identity, and they're, they're trying to figure out the theories behind disabilities and skin tones and gender. And they really are listening to the adult verbiage and language that's going on around them, absorbing them. We call that the absorbent mind. And they understand name calling and teasing about a person's looks or their gender or their background if it's unfamiliar to them. Five-year-old children begin to explore what it means to be from one race compared to another. They understand those differences. And then she also documents that by six, they can describe worth, happiness, wealth in concrete terms, what they see. And they see themselves as a member of a specific racial group. By six, seven, and eight years old, they are getting more information, correct or incorrect, and it begins to solidify their ideas of what it means to be um, a one race or another. So I'm th in thinking, I'm hoping that you'll see that it's really important for us to be thinking about these things as we're raising our children. So what do we do? How do we support them in their um, identity development and their ideas about the world? Well, another really important individual who I like a lot, and I think she's done some great writing, is Dr. Uh, Rodine Bishop. And she's done some work on what we call windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. She believes, and I agree with her, that literature and exposure are the really important pieces of this. So her idea is to really inundate children with a variety of kinds of literature. One part of this is a, a mirror, that children need to see themselves within the literature. So choosing books for them that are really about the things that they know. Um, maybe if they have a parent, they're a single parent household, that there's a book that they can read about that single parent household. Or maybe if they are from a, a family of Af they're an African American child, that they see themselves in the literature. But the other thing that uh, Dr. Bishop talks about is that you need to be able to see through into a window into someone else's culture. And we are so, it's, it's so, so wonderful to be in a time right now raising children because there is phenomenal literature about other cultures that is totally appropriate for almost every age group. And so you need to really have that in your library and read them regularly. Um, go to places to make sure that you're finding those kinds of books for your children and have them in the library. And finally, we talk about, remember we said windows, 
mirrors and sliding glass doors. Well, the sliding glass door allows you to go out into the community and visit different markets and restaurants that feature other cultures other than your own. That's a really important part of this. But I wanted to show you one book in particular. There are so many, but this one I really liked. It's called The Color of Us. Great book. And it goes through talking about, I'll just read you one page of it, just to show you what I mean. If you don't have it in your library, you really should. And this book is by Karen Katz. The illustrations are phenomenal. And on this first plate page, it says, my name is Lena and I am seven. I am the color of cinnamon. Mom says she could eat me up. And as you go through every page, it likens colors to various either um, fruits or, or um, spices, or in fact, the next page talks about um, chocolate and all the different, and it has, says it in a very positive way. After you've read a book like this, then you can explore what it means for the child. And using a really simple experiment, you can show that although we are different on the outside, we're all the same on the inside. And this is a classic, classic example where you choose a variety of eggs. I have here a brown chicken egg and then I have a white chicken egg, but also I found a really sweet quail egg. So you show them to the child and you say, what do you notice about these? And they can talk about the size and the shape and the colors, but then ultimately you wanna crack the egg and notice that in the inside, every single egg is the same. I'm not gonna do it here because that could be pretty messy, but it would be great to do if you're a two or three year old in the kitchen or your five year old in the kitchen. But these are the kinds of things you can do to really help them solidify who they are and then help them introduce them to a multicultural world that will give them so many um, experiences that they can take part in. I hope this has been interesting for you. I've really enjoyed doing it. Thanks so much. I love that we bring age appropriate diversity programming to our families at Pretend City through our home learning centers. Families move in and bring their traditions, cultures, and lifestyles with them. Let's learn more. Hi, I'm Lucy. And I'm Renata. I'm Talia. I'm Daniel, and we're the Campos family. When we were chosen to be the family in the little house, it was an opportunity to think about how we were teaching our daughters, uh, where we came from, what our beliefs, um, our traditions, and not, not only uh, to our kids, but how are we, what are we showing to our friends and our community, and embrace what you are. I felt uh, honored to be part of, of the little house at Pretend City. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity to show to the larger community in Orange County um, what our family is all about and um, share some of our values and traditions. We were in this restaurant and this waiter was serving us and she's like, oh my gosh, I've seen you guys at Pretend City. And so she gave us free dessert and we're like, oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh. Yeah, when we first came to, the, um, to, to be a part of the little house at Pretend City, um, I wasn't really that aware of how diverse the, little, the, the group of families in Orange County are. Um, after being a part of the program, and we've been back many times, we've, uh, get, we've gotten to know a whole bunch of families that are so different from us and part of this, of this community as well. And so it's an opportunity to share with everyone else how diverse the community is and to, to learn and absorb values and, and recipes and just how other people live. It gives you a sense of, of how rich uh, our community is uh, that otherwise maybe we wouldn't have a chance to see. Yeah, and we try to teach our kids to understand uh, different points of view, uh, different people, and respect. And that will make a better world, definitely. When we talk to our kids about diversity, I find that um, they are, I think, blessed to live in a community that already is so different. Um, so uh, embracing of their of, of who they are and also welcoming of who their friends are with the recent events in in our country um, they've and they've grown older so they they now think about these um, why people do things um, they've um, they've been asking questions around 
you know, why people are protesting and, and, and how come, um, you know, they're out there on the streets. And, you know, we try to be honest, but we also try to be um, down to earth about, about, about how they um, can be a part of that movement in their own special way when they are out and about in North County. Um, by respecting others, by understanding that we're all, we're all different, but part of the same whole. I have the pleasure of introducing our resident child development expert, Linda Hunter. Linda has 38 years of experience in the fields of early childhood development and family therapy. Linda will be sharing some tips on how you can create environments and experiences to help children thrive in today's world. I'm Linda Hunter and I'm here today to talk about play and how play promotes healthy development. <clears throat> you know, the world has changed and um, and the way we play has changed, the way children play has changed. Um, we used to have a lot of free play, you know, come home when the street lights come on. We played with lots of kids, of lots of different age groups. And um, we don't really realize it now, but if you like take it back down to its, its lowest common denominator, Play is the mechanism that helped us develop the skills that we need to be healthy individuals and to be smart and to be able to absorb things and um, be creative. And so I want to talk today about how that's a little different and how parents really need to be more intentional about helping their children have the opportunities to play in ways that will help their brains develop properly. Um, you know, it used to be that people ate food, ate natural foods, they, you know, nuts and berries and, and, and then over the years we started eating processed foods and when we started eating processed foods, people started to um, know that they needed to take supplements, to take vitamins, to help supplement that so that they have healthy, they, their bodies develop in a healthy way. Well, it's kind of the same thing with play. There's a lot of things that don't happen naturally anymore that are crucial and critical to healthy development. And so I kind of talk about those things as, um, as our play vitamins. And I've got three play vitamins I want to talk to you a little bit about today. The first is, um, is just that for parents to, to provide environments and experiences for children to play in an open-ended way. So nobody's there uh, facilitating it. The child is directing the play and it's in an open-ended environment with open-ended materials. So it's not something that there's a right or wrong way to do. It's a, it's a place to explore and build and wonder. And so it, uh, my challenge for you as parents is just that to provide such environments and activities. And of course, coming from Pretend City, I gotta tell you, Pretend City is a, is a great place for open-ended, child-directed activities. We built it for that. It's an intentional early childhood learning situation. And so, you know, that's one of the ways you could take my challenge. Another way would be um, to, get, to get a nice box or chest, fill it with play materials, um, dress-up materials. So dress-up clothes and accessories, hats and purses and briefcases and you know, all the accessories that you can think of. And then have your play dates and bring this out and have it, the open-ended pretend play that will happen naturally is just, it's fabulous. You, you need to step back and let that happen. My number two uh, play vitamin is one that I'm really passionate about and it's risk-taking. Risk-taking is, um, is something, our society is not good at, at this point about allowing children to take risks. And risk taking is absolute, absolutely a crucial building block for self-esteem, for self-confidence. Um, you can't teach those things. They have to happen, you know, through a child's experiences. And the play experiences of risk taking are those seeds and building blocks for later risk taking. And you think of later risk taking, gosh, if I'm gonna take a, an algebra class, that's taking a risk. I'm learning things I don't know anything about. I have to be willing to risk that and I have to be willing to risk mistakes. And unless you let your child do risk taking, they're not going to make these mistakes. So um, I'm not, my challenge to you is to number one, get comfortable with your child taking risks, physical risks, emotional risks, and, um, and that's, that's a big challenge. 
and number two to provide those opportunities so it could be as simple as um has a, a balance beam you know it could be a two by four that you put on the on the ground you know for a one and a half two year old you know that's a challenge um and and then making it higher as they master it and are able to do that uh, climbing any kind of climbing <clears throat> it's so good for children it's so it's so full of not only the risk taking and mastering and self-esteem but it's full of um, a lot of problem solving critical thinking uh, decision making um, trying something and failing and then being able to try it again all under the self-motivation so um, and it could be as simple as having your child go to a grandparent's house for the night or an aunt's or an uncle's house for the night. That's a huge risk taking. So think of the risk taking that matches not only your child's age and stage, but their personality. Some children are willing to take a lot of risks and some children just, you know, they don't. And so providing all those opportunities is, is critical for their proper development. The last and certainly not least is providing space for a child to develop a sense of wonder. Um, and it's this sense of wonder that created creativity blossoms from that um, that uh, motivates a child to um, try things out and create, you know, to, to take what's inside of them and, and create something outside that kind of shows what their thinking is. And so um, knowing how critical this is, my challenge to you is to make time, make time on a regular basis. And I would, you know, I would go into your calendar and make a date with yourself and your child for an hour, an hour and a half to do something very open-ended, something that um, will help create a sense of wonder. And it could be as simple as going out in your backyard, laying down on the grass, looking at the clouds and talking about them and figuring out what they look like. It could be as simple as taking a walk around the block um, on a bug hunt and collecting things and taking them home and they become then natural uh, manipulatives, na natural materials that then can be, um, you know, wondered about and manipulated and researched. Um, the ocean, the seashells, the rocks, you know, you can bring those home and you can do a million, you can paint rocks, you can stack rocks, you can build pathways with rocks, you can build designs with rocks. It, you know, it's like a button jar with buttons that you can, you can do those things with. But your challenge is to create the time to make it happen. I wish you luck, I wish you fun, and um, I wish your child to have a healthy development. Pretend City offers ASQs to complete either online or in the city to understand and learn where your child is developmentally. I started taking my daughter to Baby Steps when she was pretty little and I started noticing that they had the ages and stages questionnaires and I started realizing that um, through the ASQ that my daughter um, was speech -like. Thank goodness for Pretend City for uh, having me realized that because I then was able to go to my pediatrician and got um, services through the regional center. And now she got speech services and now she's doing just great. Our first experience at Autism Night, we came here not expecting much and I can't say what happened at first. Our kids just ran away from us <laughs> and we were able to find them at the water section, I believe. Yep. And they were, I'd say 50% wet. So it went well. Pretend City, being in an environment, you know, where everyone knows what's going on on Family Autism Night, it's amazing. I have to say, as a parent, it's relieving. Our particular children are kinesthetic learners. They like to touch things, feel things, they like to pretend to do things. At a very basic level, it's awesome to have a huge space that's safe, where they can run, scream, and pretend to be in this larger world this didn't exist, we wouldn't have a place to go. So without a donor's um, contributions, there wouldn't be a place like Pretend City, there wouldn't be a place for us, or specifically our children, to go to have that kind of experience. One of Pretend City's greatest champions from day one is Bill Lyon. Let's hear from Bill on why early learning is so critical and how we can all ensure Pretend City's bright future. Hi everyone, thanks for being with us today. From over 200,000 visitors a year, Field trips for underserved students, 
free developmental screenings and family autism nights to excellent parent resources and online programming. Pretend City continues to inspire me and my family. As much as Pretend City already does, we've still got a lot of work to do. 47% of Orange County kindergartners are not ready to start school and they're especially behind when it comes to gross motor skills, communication skills, and social competence. This is a big deal, and those statistics were based on data collected before the pandemic. My goal is for each and every one of us to give to the Inspire Fund today at whatever level is comfortable. And by contributing to Inspire, Pretend City's new giving fund, you can help ensure that Pretend City thrives, and so do all of our children. When we invest in early childhood, we build better brains before kids reach school, identify developmental delays in time to manage them, nurture meaningful relationships, and spur up to $16 in social benefits for every $1 we invest. Your gift today makes a direct impact on the programs and experiences that we offer here at Pretend City. We have a few different ways to make it easy to give. You can minimize the video you're currently watching and click on the Give Now button that will take you to our website to make a gift. You can also text Start Smart to 44321 to receive the link to give from your phone. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen with your phone's camera and it will take you to PayPal to make your gift. If you have any questions, you can message us via the chat window. And now, we'd like to give you a few minutes to make a gift at this time. Our goal is for everyone to make a gift at whatever level is comfortable. Every dollar matters. Thank you everyone. Your gifts will go a long way in supporting healthy development for our community's children. You are the best. Thank you for your gifts to help build better brains. Wow, what a fun, informative, and meaningful program. Thank you everyone. We've learned that play is serious business and early childhood education is the most important investment we can make in our children today. Join us in making Orange County the best place to raise a kid and to be a kid by making a gift today that will support our children's future tomorrow. Thank you. We loved all of your outside the box cardboard creations. And now the winner of the contest is Amelia Earhart. Thank you again to everyone who participated. Pretend City encourages you to continue imagining, creating, and inspiring with your children. Thank you for spending the afternoon with us. It means so much to us kids. It's going to be a bright future. Now get out there and play. Thank you for joining us in making Pretend City the premier hub for early childhood education and family resources. We're so grateful for your support. Mm -hmm.